Hey everybody and welcome back to an exciting edition of the Imagineers Disney Podcast. I am your host, Matt, Travel Mation, uh, Travel Agent, and I am joined once again by my co-host, Susie. Hi, Susie. Hi, Matt. Man, do we have a show for this week. <sighs> I, mean, I know, I'm already like tired <laughs> thinking about all of these all of the things. announcements. Yeah, it was a very busy... The past few days have been very, very busy. So, um, we are excited to talk about these new additions that are going to be coming to the parks, the resorts, to a movie theater near you. So, there was just a lot going on uh, with Destination D, which took place just a few days ago. And a uh, special little release for those of you who happen to be tuning in to some football on Thanksgiving. <laughs> out of nowhere. <laughs> out of nowhere, but we will I'm get really, to that soon. Yeah, we'll that. yeah, yeah. We'll oh, I can't wait. Okay, but yes, lots and lots of things coming to the parks, um, and then some elaborations and more details on things that we already knew were coming, but now we kind of have pictures and a little bit more details whether some are good details or some are bad details we'll get <laughs> to in just a second so four parks um two parks having some major changes coming uh first of which is epcot yeah let's talk about epcot first so i think really the big thing for epcot is the um replacement for illuminations mm-hmm so we do have more of a timetable of when this is going to take place. Illuminations will be leaving sometime next fall, uh, late summer, early fall of mm -hmm. 2019. And so what wasn't known at the time was, okay, so what's going to happen? How, how how short of a time is there going to be between shows? Right. Is it going to be like the Magic Kingdom where there was no delay whatsoever between wishes? Which is impressive. And, yes. <laughs> uh, so for those of you who um, remember the Wishes show and are still mourning it, I apologize. Um, but Apology they, accepted. They did their last show Sweet. and then the very next night, Happily Ever After um, premiered. So very quick turnaround for that. Very impressive. Yeah, so, but Epcot's not doing that. Epcot is not doing that. So it looks like we are going to have a kind of temporary show that will sit in Illumination's place until the brand new show, which will be coming in 2020. Which be... makes me think that that new show is going to be, I mean, Real huge, big. massive. Real um, big. Yeah, the thing about going from Wishes to Happily Ever After is a lot of the, like, technology. I'm assuming they, they added new things for Happily Ever After, but you already had all the projection projectors up. Um, it just... It is a change. It just didn't seem like quite as big of a change as what I'm expecting to happen at Epcot since they're giving us like an interim nighttime show. Yeah. And, you know, my second question was, okay, well, when Rivers of Light was delayed over in Animal Kingdom <laughs> <laughs> and, and they kind of threw together this Jungle Book uh, show to kind of hold people off, fend off the... Uh, Village, villagers with their pitchforks. And... <laughs> yeah, because hindsight, we really shouldn't have been that excited for Rivers of Light. But... <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, some people really like it. It's and worth it, it's a good seeing. Show. It's a good it's show. Worth it's worth looking at. I was just expecting once. more waiting that long for a show. But... Anyway, so they kind of plugged in this Jungle Book show. And, you know, being the tech guy, like, I appreciate it. For for it for it being thrown together that last minute, like, mm -hmm. it is what it is. And I thought they did an admirable job, um, admirable job in doing that. But, um, yeah, so hopefully with this replacement show, which is going to be called Epcot Forever... Which automatically makes me think of like Wakanda forever. Yeah. <laughs> so like, watch me. I'm like, I'm gonna be in uh, World Showcase, and as soon as the show starts, I'm gonna be like, I've got forever. I've got forever. <laughs> uh, yeah. So unlike the Jungle Book, a uh, little thrown together shindig. This is more pre-planned. Forever. 
yes, it's not coming until next fall, fall of 2019. So they have quite a bit of time getting ready for that. Uh, we're not exactly sure of how much time is, you know, what, what date that is. We have fall, which is a time period, <laughs> but probably pretty, I would think pretty early. Yeah, I think it'll be. Illuminations is ending like, I guess, late, late summer, like August. So it looks like we will get that July 4th Illuminations uh, Oh my gosh, more that's going to be a crazy night though, since it'll be its it's last 4th of July. Yep. Um, but with this new show that is coming in 2020, I, I'm just really looking forward to seeing what they do. I mean, it's been 20 years since Illuminations has um, debuted. So that's 20 years of technological innovation to kind of catch up with. So I'm sure we're going to be seeing lots of new fountains. I mean, I'm hoping if we can get anything as close to the quality as World of Color over in Disneyland, um, mm. that would be great. But I don't think it'll be that that much fountain work. But uh, fountains and projections and you know LED panels. Uh, so... And it looks like by the little promo image that they shot up there, um, the it looks like we're seeing some Moana and some Coco. That'll be exciting. Um, speaking of exciting, Guardians of the Galaxy. We know that we saw some uh, the first images of the ride vehicle. Yes. For the attraction. Yeah. So at the IAAPA attraction show. Uh, which is at the Orange County Convention Center. Uh, the uh, image of the coaster car was released, and so it, it kind of looks like like a like a futuristic type of car, I guess. Like there's room for four people, two rows. Um, but what I thought was interesting is like it it looks cool, um, and it like I don't know what I think this ride is going to be anymore. I had a, I thought it was going to be like an intense roller coaster, uh, but Disney says it's a storytelling coaster. So it probably won't be as like intense and fast as maybe a regular roller coaster. They're wanting to tell you a story. Uh, they said you're going to be able to get up close with Star-Lord, Gamora, Rocket, and the gang. So I don't really know what that means. It's like a hybrid of a regular like dark ride and a roller coaster, but it's massive. So it's got to be intense enough to qualify for that huge building that they're building and all that concrete. I think we talked about that several months ago, like the like four trillion trucks of concrete that came in and poured. Right. Uh, it's just going to be... I don't know what I know what I think it's going to be anymore. I wasn't expecting high intensity roller coaster, but the the hybrid idea of a storytelling coaster should be. Well, it looks good. like the uh, the ride vehicles are actually going to move. Like they they look like they're going to tilt back and forth, yes. or they can. Well, from what I on understand, the track. it's going to focus your attention on whatever is around in the environment, whether that's beside you behind you in front of you so like you're going to be like almost moving i guess on the track somehow but so like the regular cool. car like stays forward and then like the different seat areas turn maybe I, maybe you know, i don't know i don't know i can't figure it out or maybe well, i mean we have i mean obviously this is a completely different ride system but um harry potter and the uh forbidden journey over at universal islands of adventure you you know when you're moving through the attraction, you're kind of focused in on certain elements as you move through it. So maybe that's mm. something similar. But yeah, well, it almost sounded like when they're describing it like a uh, a simulator, but it's obviously not because you have a giant behind building taking up. Like yeah, it, it is a coaster. Four times. Okay, Spaceship Earth could fit inside four times in this ride. <sighs> It's it's going to be huge. So I I don't know. I'm excited oh, now yeah, that I really too. have no idea what it's going to be. I'm also thinking it's not just like one giant coaster where like you can look and see the track next to you. I'm thinking maybe it's like enclosed and maybe there's like stuff on the wall. I don't know. All our speculation from here on out. 
We don't know. When is that coming? Not soon enough. No. <laughs> Not soon enough. Uh, 2021 as part of Walt Disney World's 50th anniversary celebration. That's going to be a big year. That's going to yeah. be a big year. So. Um, so other news from the Epcot Park. Uh, we do have an official name of the Ratatouille attraction coming to the France Pavilion. And it's, wait for it, Remy's mm. Ratatouille Adventure. Where did they come up with that name? They spent a lot what of time a... on that one. Yes, they did. No, I'm excited. So <laughs> this this ride is um, over at Disneyland Paris. So it'll be nice having that pulled into World Showcase inside the France Pavilion. Because uh, you know, I think uh, World Showcase needs some love. You know, Add mm-hmm. some different attractions in through there. Clearly, with the um, popularity of Frozen and the uh, changeover from Maelstrom to the Frozen uh, attraction, you know, mm-hmm. it has brought more people into Epcot. So, uh, I think little additions like this will definitely help. And uh, also, there is going to be the addition of a Beauty and the Beast sing along. Oh my gosh! I hope it's like um, the Frozen sing along which regardless of how you feel about frozen is a really really fun show um no matter how many times you see it it's always really good so i hope it's kind of like that i hope it's silly and interactive um but it's important to note that these are all in addition to what is currently in france they are not replacing anything like frozen ever after replaced so these are all brand new attractions so for all the fans of impressions de france de france whatever de france de france um (laughs) it sounded so southern instead of french de france ever well anyway uh that will not be leaving so i actually really like that too like i'm a big fan of of the musical score that they use for that Mm -hmm. should they uh you know upgrade the visuals probably so I mean, the uh, 1980s village people and the... Well, aren't the 80s making a comeback, like, in fashion? Yeah. I don't know. And, like... Uh, I mean, there's a lot the French of... French Riviera with the bathing suits. Visual... I'm like, oh, man, we are a few decades Visuals around that need to be updated. Yeah, for sure. But, 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 but my Canada friends, Canadian yes. friends... They're getting some love, too. Yeah, the Canadian show O Canada. I guess that's pretty self-explanatory. The Canadian show O Canada um, is getting updated. Well, as long as they keep (laughs) Martin Short in the film, good to go. Yeah, maybe it'll be... I don't know what it'll be. I don't know. There you go. It's getting updated, though. Go check it out. I'll I'll go check it out. I'll be a good sport. We'll have to do that next time we're in Epcot. I just along with Mission Space, more, Tower of oh, Terror. I felt like Mission Space. Like I will die. Like didn't someone die on that? Oh, let's not. Let's not. Let's not talk about that. Like that's. What, I don't want to ride rides if people like get seriously injured. Or it was die an on. unknown medical condition. Matt, what if I have an unknown medical condition? They toned it down after that because it used to be real intense. So, but. Whatever. I don't have any aversions or medical conditions regarding Canada or maple syrup, so I will go check out the new show. (laughs) Moving on to Hollywood Studios. All right. So Hollywood Studios, we all know, is going to be having a couple of big additions um, in the next year. So first off, let's talk about Star Wars. Oh, Um, always. Always. So we do have the names of the attractions for um, Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. Mm-hmm. And the Millennium Falcon uh, ride is going to be called Smuggler's Run. And then we have the Resistance-themed attraction, which is going to be Star Wars Rise of the Resistance. So there you go. Two names. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's about it. <laughs> well, in addition to that, they did release uh, some of the score... Oh, yeah. That is going to be inside Galaxy's Edge. Still from John Williams. Written by John Williams. Original for this 
park which is super cool i hope that they put that like um like maybe they sell the album or they put it up on on a streaming service um because i just love john williams music who doesn't exactly i mean well i guess the guy who beat out for like all of these composing jobs maybe they don't like him <laughs> i don't know i'm not a composer i don't know how cutthroat the job is anyway um I'm surprised there's only two attractions with the size that Galaxy's Edge is going to be. I don't know what else, I mean, well, what else is going to be there? I, I mean, I know an attraction can be huge. Obviously we talked about Guardians being huge, but is there, I mean, obviously they've got to move all the meet and greets over there. There's going to be stores, I think, I but think there's got to be other experiences. I think character interaction is going to be a big thing. And not just staple characters like Kylo mm-hmm. Ren and Darth Vader and all that. I'm talking like um, cast members that are in um, more alien type costumes, like the the people of Hollywood, but like yes. alien version. Like yeah. just, and that makes sense since the hotel, which they also released a, a little bit of info about, um, is going to be so immersive. So yeah, it would that, make sense since the two are connected that when you come there, there should just be people walking around looking like aliens. Yeah, it is It is going to be super immersive. I'm glad you brought up the hotel. <clears throat> so we are looking at uh, the opening of that hotel to be 18 to 24 months after uh, Galaxy's Edge opens. So going to have to hold your horses a little bit on that one. But... I mean, just by the details that they have released, it is going to be a completely immersive experience. So what I'm trying to explain to people and describe to people when uh, people ask me about it, um, I'm going to tell them, think of it as a land cruise. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I think we're going to be looking at a pretty penny to stay there for the uh, experience. It's also described as a multi-day adventure, so I'm assuming... There's no like one night option, just hang out since it is immersive. Uh, I guess that would fit into that cruise description that you're purchasing like blocks of time to be staying there. Maybe they'll have different um, amount, like four day, five day, like right. a cruise does. Yeah. And, and and looking by, they actually released some like preliminary blueprints of, mm-hmm. of the, I don't know if you saw those or not, but I mean, we could be talking under a hundred rooms total dang well i guess that makes sense so they're wanting to keep it pretty very yeah legit so uh, it is not not gonna be cheap (laughs) i just finished my christmas shopping today so thinking about already having to like save up money for a hotel that's not gonna open for another two years from this point two and a half years maybe I guess that's enough time. I'll probably just cover it. Well, it's going to be great. But, uh, you know, we'll let you know as soon as more information comes out on the details of the hotel and Galaxy's Edge. Um, Also, Mickey's Runaway Railway will be opening sometime next fall. You're rolling your eyes. I am rolling my eyes. No. All right. It's going to be good. All right, let me just get a few things out of the way. Mickey his very own attraction. Mickey deserves an attraction. The the fact that he does not have... His face is everywhere. Like, it's his... It's his place. Does he also need an attraction? Yes. I don't know. Yes. I don't know. I don't know. Lots of questions there. So that's one. Number two, I love the great movie ride. I felt like if it had been... If it had been gotten the, don't laugh. If it got the update that it needed, it could have been really, really cool. The journey into the movies. I love old movies. I love new movies. I love cheesy Gene Kelly animatronics. I don't care. <laughs> if, if it got the love and attention it needed through the years, I think it, it would have been fine. My last complaint is that the Mickey and the Minnie who are going to be featured in this look so stupid Uh i i don't like this new animated version i've tried watching the mickey shorts i think they're disrespectful i think they're at times a little like inappropriate it's like it's just 
it's weird uh. to me. I don't like their faces. It just looks really like dark. I don't know. I don't like it. I have some homework for you. I have lots of opinions. I have some what? homework for you. What? I want you to go back and look at some of the early. Oh, I Mickey know. Mouse I know. Cartoons. Mickey was kind of a jerk. <laughs> um, he's and... kind of kind of rude, but like now he's now he's not, and like he's got a different personality. And like I'm just gonna say it, I don't appreciate watching some of these things. And like there's people's butts. I think it looks. I'm like this isn't like cute classic mickey which we have now i get it i get in like the 20s and 30s mickey wasn't exactly the mouse next door but now he is i just think that this is going to be like like it's i just am expecting like fart jokes like i just look at those that style of animation and i'm like this looks tacky i'm done you can talk about the update now well go ahead tell me how you really feel now <laughs> if, if anyone's still listening <laughs> No, uh, nope. Two weeks their own. I don't have a problem with the animation per se. Um, is it my favorite? No, but I'm fine with it. I think some of the uh, cartoons are actually kind of funny. Hey, all I want to have is my Potato Land T-shirt at uh, Mickey's Runaway. <laughs> Mickey's Runaway Rail Railway from Goofy. Potato Land. Potato Land. You've never Which seen one that? Was that. Oh come on! You don't like the shorts. Like which, like the classic ones, no, like the no, good no, ones, no, no, no. like the it's, recent it's, it's ones. It's one of the new ones. No, I've seen like three of them. You need, was... you need to watch this one. It's funny. Ugh, Potato Land, okay. Goofy, Goofy wants to go to Potato Land, and drags Mickey and Donald, and it's Idaho. Nice. Potato Land. <laughs> I would go to a theme park centered around potatoes. The food would be so good. But the cool thing they're doing with the ride, and I'm sure you saw the video. So the train whistle that they are using for the ride are the exact same whistles that they use for Steamboat Willie. I I do like that. Now that is that is cool. I I hope it has a lot of nods in a appropriate manner to old school things like that. Well, what are y'all's feelings? What do you yeah, guys think? Yeah, let us know. Let us know. I I probably represent a minority. Uh I think a lot of people do share your sentiments. I just, I'm okay with it. I'm okay. So I'll go write it. Oh yeah. I hope I, I hope I'm I'm hope I'm wrong. I hope I'm just overreacting out of someone who's stuck in their ways because I loved the great movie ride and when they said a Mickey ride, this isn't what I was thinking. Um, I was hoping maybe they would combine the two and it would be like Mickey taking you through the movies, but it's not. So. I just need to get that out of my mind and gear up. <laughs> yeah, and then um, we also did learn that there was going to be another new nighttime experience coming to Hollywood Studios. It's going to be the wonderful world of animation, and it will make its debut in May of 2019. So that's actually, I think, probably the closest thing coming coming yeah. to the parks and all the announcements. Um, so this will part, mark the park's 30th anniversary. Uh, and this new show will use um, projections, just like it does with the Star Wars show. And uh, it'll highlight 90 years of Disney animation. So that should be super fun. So I, can we assume then that for a little while this will probably take place? of the Star Wars nighttime show because I feel like Hollywood studios like cannot handle like a 17th nighttime show of some kind all in one night. They just, they constantly have something going on and it would make sense to replace it for a little while with this. So, yeah. Yeah. And I love all the projection shows and all the parts. Oh, yeah. So, um, I, I think this one, the, uh, promo image with, you know, you have Coco and, uh, the Incredibles, and then you have your classic animated films. You got uh, Sleeping Beauty, Beauty and the Beast, uh, Snow White. So uh, it'd be interesting to see what they uh, do with the show, and I'm sure it's going to be great. Great addition to the nighttime lineup, and uh, another reason to stick around in the parks to see the shows at night. So, yeah. And Question. Yes. What do Hollywood Studios and Epcot have in common? Besides the fact that we talked about both of them just now. 
<laughs> Their shows start at nine o'clock. I don't know. <laughs> you know what that reminds me of? It's so random. One of my favorite parts of Monsters Inc. is when he's like, he's uh, uh, Randall's talking to Mike, and he's like, when the this hand gets to the this hand, and he's like, the scare four will be painted like it's so random and stupid just like this comment no the thing that they have in common is they are both very near to a new line of transportation oh boy ah nice segue okay thanks it took a while to get there yeah i was wondering where you're going with that i found sometimes i do too (laughs) um but the the new um sky liner gondola system um at walt disney world i think we've talked about it before that's the big thing that's taking up like half of the parking lot right now at hollywood studios um it's going to connect several resorts with hollywood studios and epcot yes the back of world showcase yes cool so uh we finally saw our first actual physical glimpse of what it looked like instead of like a, a rendering it's small. It's only going to be able to carry about 10 people at a time. <laughs> and I wonder, yeah. like, it says the capacity is 10, but, you know, an elevator says it can hold 15. Do you want Yeah, 15? but you know how they cram people Do you want everywhere. 15? Yeah, They're as... going to pack us in like sardines. The, the lack of air conditioning scares me. Yeah, so if you remember at the beginning of the show, we mentioned that there's like some exciting news and some non-exciting news. I don't think this is going to last very long. I don't think I it's... Think it will. Um, I, I, mean, I just I, don't see that being a sustainable mode of transportation in Central Florida with no air conditioning. Well, I, I mean, obviously, I, I, I would hope that they would think about this before you know, designing them. Well, um, that's a good point. There's going to be some sort of ventilation system. Maybe if it's moving along at a certain rate, it takes the air the air intake. Maybe, and then just, maybe, you know. but ten people packed into something. It's an, it's probably what would you say eight or nine feet wide. Like it's not very big. They, they are smaller than I thought they were going to be. Yeah, yeah, so. um, and it's it's by a like world renowned company. I just am still curious as to the practicality of a skyway system in central Florida. Cause you know, magic kingdom used to have a, oh, mm-hmm. uh, a, a similar transportation from one side of the park to the other, but there's these things called storms and lightning in Florida. So it was shut down all the time. I'm I'm thinking this is there's something different about this that they're obviously not going to invest this much money for something that's going to be shut down every 15 minutes in the summer, uh, but we'll see. I'm I think not they're going to need super as super excited as many modes of transportation to get to and from Hollywood Studios as oh they my can. gosh, good point. So I just won't be taking this one. Oh, I'll, maybe for I'll maybe for try it. for I fun, mean, like I'll try it, yeah. but I don't think this is. I think this might be more of like a novelty thing. If it's like, oh, well, yeah, let's just take this. I don't think it's going to be the fastest mode of transportation. I mean, you got to think. I mean, it's going to and from Pop Century and Art of Animation and Caribbean Beach, which are some of the largest resorts. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, Pop Century itself has like 2,800 rooms. I mean, it's, it's ridiculous. So... Uh, I'd be curious to see the capacity, and hopefully it will take the load off the bus system uh, because that can get pretty um, crowded at the end of the night when you're leaving the park. But uh, I guess we'll see uh, just what it does, and I have faith in it. I have faith in it. I have faith in it, too, but I like air conditioning. <laughs> yes. So... Uh... There's that. So all of that was fun, but let's get to the really fun stuff. Yes. Yes. So there were lots of movie news and announcements that came out. Um, so first, let's let's talk about Dumbo. Mm-hmm. Let's dress the elephant in the room. Ah, oh ah. my gosh, that was really fun. <laughs> you looking forward to it? 
Um, I think so. I think so. Dumbo was never one of my favorites. I think he's adorable. Um, I thought it was very sad growing up. That's because it is. Uh, so to see it like this, I think it'll also be sad, but I kind of like the dark, almost like dirty look that it had. It just makes it feel more like it's in the correct time period. Like and Dust Bowl. Circus. Like, yeah. Yeah. Like the depression era Dumbo. It fits. So yeah, I really, I, I really I like the art right. direction, the art direction yeah. and the, like the scenic design. Uh, cinematography looks really cool. So I'm mm-hmm. just, I'm, I'm really interested in seeing how it all comes together visually uh, and with the story. So yeah, I am looking forward to it. And uh, I think with the creative touch of Tim Burton, it's going to be really interesting. So, mm-hmm. but uh, so that was exciting. Uh, and then we had our very first glimpse of Toy Story 4. We got two glimpses yes, of did. Toy Story 4. We got the... Like two um, days in a row. Yeah, what in the world? We got the video of all the characters kind of holding hands and moving around in like a circle with the clouds in the background. And then... Forky. 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 <laughs> who is a fork with uh, like little pipe cleaners. Like, is like a is that what those are called? Yeah, but he's he's got like arms and like a face drawn on him. Uh, so that came out of nowhere. And then a video of some carnival game toys. Ducky and Bunny. Yes. Who are a... You know who were, who's doing the voices though, right? Yeah. yeah it was yeah. Key and Peele. Yeah. I'm excited about that. To infinity and your mom. <laughs> <laughs> so. It looks cute. I'm excited. I like Toy Story. Um... Oh my gosh. I'm such a pessimist this episode. I like how Toy Story 3 ended. I thought it wrapped everything up nicely and it just gives you that idea of like, you know, a toy's life goes on like to the next kid and then that when that one's fulfilled and like they just are continually filling and touching multiple people's lives with joy. And then they're like, okay, here's Toy Story 3 and a fork or four and a fork. And I think it looks cute and I'm going to go see it and it's probably really good. I just, I hope we don't just keep doing these to the point where it's not good anymore. Like Cars no, I think, I think this was is good the and then the next two movies sucked. I think this is the end of the journey for Toy Story. I hope so. Uh, I, I hope think, so. I think uh, Tim Allen said the end, the end is going to like crush our souls. How can it be more emotional than the last one though because oh, the last like one, one of the unless, toys I mean if they die but <laughs> I, I think it'll happen suck. I think I think like really? Woody's gonna die yeah I don't know if I want to watch this anymore then. <sighs> it's gonna be that so, you're right they they did say that this if you thought Toy Story 3 was emotional you haven't seen anything yet was basically what they said creating That's new terrifying. ways to destroy your souls so you know what else is a new way to just oh, no. re-destroy your soul okay so I, I know you're going with this. I'm really looking forward to this, but I'm really mm-hmm, not mm-hmm. at the same time. So, <laughs> <laughs> all right, let, story time because it's not just like this happened. Like this freaking popped out of, nowhere. Out of thin air. So I'm sitting around the Thanksgiving table, watching the uh, Redskins and Cowboys take to the field, and then. Tradition. Yeah. Yep. You know, and we're like talking in the background and like commercials come on. Like Life is normal. And then uh, I glance up and I see this scene of an African savanna. I'm like, wow, that looks really familiar. And then like the next <laughs> shot, I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> I'm like, hold the phone. Everybody shut up. And lo and behold. Yeah. So I was outside with my dog and I uh, was, I was putting her leash down and I looked inside and I could see from the back porch where I'm at playing with her into the house where the TV is. Cause I was taking her out during a break during the game. And I was like, Oh, that looks like the same thought as you like, okay, that kind of looks familiar. My first thought actually was like jungle book. Like, okay, maybe they're going to show jungle book on TV. And then it kept going on and I literally was like tripping over things, running into my house to rewind and watch it once I realized what it was. And it almost was surreal because you see so many fake trailers. Yeah. Like people will just like make the little nonsense trailer? click. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like senseless false clickbait 
and I, and that thought popped through my head but then i was like i'm this is abc or espn whichever channel it was which is a disney affiliate so i'm like wait no this is legit this isn't like i'm not being punked this is okay? not a drill this is real and i was jumping up and down and i just realized we also haven't said what it is yet yeah for those of you who were living under a rock uh the past couple of days we were talking about the lion king trailer I don't want to call it live action because you have to have like live people. For yeah, live I guess action. it's just uh, CGI. Oh, I also don't like the word remake, but it's kind of it, it was like shot for shot, which is fine with me because it was beautiful. Um, Jungle Book took my breath away. This is going to absolutely do the same. And James Earl Jones. Oh my god! Coming back as Mufasa. You you can't, like, he has the most iconic voice of all time. The dude's Darth Vader, okay? Darth Vader's voice. Like, it's not something you can replicate or even, like, take in a new direction and try to, like, change it up. Like, with some of these other characters, um, with the, the new actors, so you're like, oh, yeah, that that person fits in this role. Like, no one can ever fill his role. I agree. But him. I agree, but uh, I I don't know if I'm emotionally prepared to sit through. <laughs> I'm just I'm just now Watching getting over Mufasa die again. I'm just now getting over it, Susie. Like it's taken that long. It's taken like 24, 25 years <laughs> to fully get over Mufasa's death, and now I get to watch it in uh, super high definition. Yeah. So and you can it's gonna look like an actual lion. <sighs> And it's just going to be even more heartbreaking. Um, but I'm very excited. Very talented cast. Um, Jungle Book did the same thing. Like They had really big names filling those roles. I think Lion King like is taking it to the next level because every single character is, is a star. Yep. A big star. And... Uh... I don't know if you knew this about me or not, but uh, Lion King is my favorite Disney animated film. I think it Same. is. I think it is the best. I think it's the best animated film of all, all time, time. Yep. without a doubt. It is a masterpiece. The yep. animation, the emotion, it's funny. It's got good flow. The music, the music mm-hmm. I could talk for days about. I don't think. It, I don't think it gets better than that. So. Normally, I would be a little like apprehensive to see something like that be redone, but based on the previous films that they've done, the new like quote unquote live action versions, they've all been spectacular. So I think that wrapped up uh, about everything from the Destination D event plus the mm-hmm. little extra Thanksgiving special with uh, <laughs> the Lion King trailer. But I mean, 2019 is going to be a big year, uh, oh both gosh, for the parks yeah. and for the movies. I mean, just looking at the slate of movies, you have Captain Marvel, and you have Dumbo, and then you're going to have uh, Avengers 4. Oh my gosh, Like, and this is all within a very short period mm-hmm. of time. So from early March with Captain Marvel to the middle of July Don't forget about Lion Aladdin. King. Don't forget about Aladdin, too. Oh, and Aladdin. We got an, another Marvel movie coming out, too, uh, Spider-Man Far From Home. Yep. So there's a lot going on. Uh, and a lot of like really emotional things I feel between Dumbo, Avengers 4, Sp- uh, Toy Story 4, and Lion King. Um, move out of my way, children, at the box office because I want the best seat. I'm and that's just the stoked. summer. That's just the oh, summer. Yeah. And then we'll have some more things in the fall. So mm-hmm. I don't know if they've officially announced yet, but I would I anticipate that the Jungle Cruise um, should be probably oh, yeah. the fall slate. Because I know mm-hmm. they've they've done some uh, production videos, some little teasers for with that. the rock. Yes, and then of course uh, December. It all comes to an end. <laughs> Star Wars Episode Nine. So, which uh, we should be getting a title pretty soon. People yes. are people are restless and uneasy, and the rumor mills are flying mills. Rampant. Rampant. I don't know what mills do. <laughs> mill. They're running a muck. Running a mill. 
it's coming soon. We'll we'll definitely let y'all know. And and um, maybe like last year, there's a lot of speculation with the name The Last Jedi. So maybe when we get that name, we'll talk about it a little bit too. Yep. So yeah, there's there's plenty to look forward to both in your theater and at the parks, and especially with the Star Wars stuff uh, with the film, and then it all just kind of tying in with the opening of of, of Galaxy's Edge. Um, so. And we get Star Wars Celebration next year, too. Yes, in So April. we could be getting even more uh, Galaxy's Edge hotel movie TV show news um, at that time. At the panel, yep, at Celebration, which is in Chicago this year in April. So anyway, well, I know that we have talked a lot about a lot of things today. So, <laughs> so what are you most looking forward to in 2019? That is the question we will pose. Are you looking forward to something that's in the parks? Are you looking forward to a particular movie? We love to hear from you, so just comment in the comment section on the post. Uh, you can find us on Facebook. We are the Imagineers Disney Podcast. And please, if you have not subscribed to the podcast, go ahead and click the button on either iTunes, Google Play, or Stitcher. And while you're there, leave us a review. Just tell us what you like and what you'd like to hear from us in the future. And, uh, yeah, just join in on the conversation. We'd love to hear from you. And uh, I think that's going to do it for this week's episode. So on behalf of myself and Susie, thank you for listening. And until next week, remember, if you can dream it, you can do it. Mm -hmm.